This Elden Ring series covers how to do all quests and missable content in order so that all choices and rewards will be available. For best results, follow this series from the start of part 1. There will be spoilers in the form of important information and, as usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. At the end of part 3, we had just finished Celevis's quest and completed the last major step in Nefeli's quest by giving her the Stormhawk King. We're going to return to Alta's Plateau and venture into Mount Gelmir, but first let's head back to Warmaster's Shack in Limgrave. Sit at the Site of Grace and wait until nightfall, then get up and sit back down at the Grace to reload the game. This should cause Bernal to disappear from the shack, and when you enter, the bell-bearing hunter boss will appear and start attacking. If instead Bernal is still there, you may need to speak through all of his dialogue and purchase one of his Ashes of War first, then repeat the previous steps. If you fight this boss early on, it's pretty difficult, however at this point in the game just be aggressive and it shouldn't pose too much of a challenge. The hunter will drop the Bone Peddler's Bell Bearing when defeated at this location. You can repeat this process at the Church of Vows. Speak through Muriel's dialogue, pass time until night at the Site of Grace, then reload the game by getting up and resting at the Grace once more. Muriel should be gone and the bell-bearing hunter will appear as you approach the fountain used for absolution. It's a little bit tougher this time around, but shouldn't be too difficult. The hunter will drop the Meat Peddler's Bell Bearing when defeated at this location. Now let's travel back to Alta's Plateau. The Godfrey Icon, a great legendary talisman, can be found near the Grand Lift of Dectus. From the top platform, travel south to find a descending path that will take you to the Golden Lineage Everjail. It requires a Stone Sword key to access, and inside you'll face off with Godfrey the Grafted. Defeat him to get the legendary Godfrey Icon Talisman, which boosts the power of charged weapon skills and spells. Next, find Corrin a short distance north of the Altus Highway Junction. Speak through all of his dialogue, then make a stop by the Second Church of America. There, along with a sacred tear, you'll find Yura laying on the ground. I recommend eliminating the two dogs out front first, then speak with Yura, pick up the Nagakiba he drops, and prepare to fight. Moments later, Violet Bloody Finger Eleonora will invade. Her Dragon Breath attacks are dangerous and I found the best strategy is to just be aggressive. Defeating her is rewarded with Eleonora's Pole Blade and the Purifying Crystal Tear, which will come in handy later on. This is the last missable step in Yura's questline, and will resolve his story once we reach the mountaintops of the giants. For now, continue north to the forest-spanning Great Bridge. If you're in need of somber or regular smithing stones at level 5, make your way down the broken bridge to the forest below, then head southeast to the Altus Tunnel. Along with upgrade materials, you'll also get the somber stone miner's bell bearing too. Back near the Great Bridge site of Grace, there is a transporter that will take you to the other side of the forest. Turn to the south to find the Gold Mask a short distance away. You'll need to interact with Gold Mask, then return to Corrin and inform him of Gold Mask's whereabouts. Corrin will next be found alongside Gold Mask by the Broken Bridge, where he will sell new, stronger incantations, including Great Heal. You'll want to speak with both Corrin and Gold Mask at this location. We'll continue that quest lane later on once we get to Landell. For now, you can head along the path to the southeast to the Sainted Hero's Grave. Outside, you'll find a Black Knife Assassin that drops the legendary Black Knife Dagger when defeated. A little further south is the Stormcaller Church, where another Sacred Tear can be obtained, along with an incantation which is in a chest hiding in the corner of the church. Next, we'll make our way west towards Mount Gelmir. After discovering the Bridge of Iniquity Site of Grace, keep going in the same direction until reaching the Corpse Stench Shack. Anastasia Tarnished Eater will invade at this location, and this is the second time we're seeing her. When defeated, she will drop the Sacred Butcher Knife. Inside the shack, you'll also find Golden Vow, one of the best buff incantations for melee builds. Double back towards the Bridge of Iniquity, keeping an eye on the cliff wall to the south. 
If you're looking for it, you'll spot an easy-to-miss ladder that can be climbed up to the first Mount Gelmir campsite. To the west, past the Siege Tower and Pumpkinhead Enemy, you'll find a message on the ground from Patches saying Rainbow Stones lead the way to riches. Sure enough, a trail of rainbow stones will lead to the south. Follow it, but look towards the east while you do. Our good friend Patches can be found crouching nearby. Speak with him if you want, then follow the trail of rainbow stones to the last one. This will trigger a small cutscene with Patches and you'll wind up down near Seathwater Cave, which you can open with two stone sword keys. If you prefer to save your keys, you can ride west until reaching Seathwater Terminus instead. Going back to speak with Patches near the kickoff point will get you the calm down gesture if you don't already have it from earlier. Now, while that was a fun way to get down to Seathwater River, there is also a much simpler route. From the Erdtree Gazing Hill, travel up the rocky path to the northeast. This will lead into Windham Ruins. From there, head northwest to get to the Seathwater River site of Grace. That's all there is to it. A short distance north is the Seathwater Cave, and you already know how to get to the terminus from there. Moving on, travel west and then south from Seathwater Terminus to arrive at a lake of lava, where you'll need to face off with another magma worm. It's similar to the magma worm Makar, but the terrain is slightly less favorable. Afterwards, head out into the lake and stand on a large rock jutting out from the lava. You should be able to see and speak with Alexander. Alexander will give you the Jar Helm and info on his next destination, which is all the way in the mountaintops of the Giants. Make sure to go through all of Alexander's dialogue before moving on. Continue moving around the edge of Mount Gelmir, now towards the southeast. Pass by the Hermit's Shack and discover the Craftsman's Shack site of Grace. Travel northeast into the Hermit Village and find the Your Beautiful Prattling Pate on a Corpse. We'll need this later on for Box Quest. For now, head north out of the village and past Demi-Human Queen Maggie to reach the primeval sorcerer Azur's Site of Grace. Nearby, you'll find the primeval sorcerer decked out in green glintstone. Interact with him to obtain the Comet Azur legendary sorcery. At this point, we're going to finish up Selen's questline. With the Comet Azur in hand, return to Sorceress Selen at Waypoint Ruins. A new dialogue option should be available where you show her the sorcery. You may also need to go through the Tell Me Your Story dialogue and then choose Let Us Journey Together in response. Afterwards, there should be an additional dialogue option where Selen will task you with seeking out Primeval Sorcerer Lusat. She'll give you the Selian Sealbreaker, which will be necessary to reach him. Lusat is located within Celia Hideaway in Kalid. To get there, we'll start at the Church of the Plague. From the church, travel north until you see a large tombstone with a sorcerer standing guard. A false boulder is wedged in the mountainside behind him. It will fade when struck, revealing the entrance to Celia Hideaway. Now this is a whole dungeon with a very difficult trio boss at the end, but we'll just be going to Lusat in this guide. Make your way through a few more false walls and travel along the indicated path. You'll eventually want to drop down to the pit below using a giant crystal to safely descend. At the bottom, you'll find a sorcerer to the north guarding a magic seal. Deal with them and then use the seal breaker to dispel the barrier.
Inside, you'll meet Primeval Sorcerer Lusat and acquire the Stars of Ruin Legendary Sorcery. To get back out of the cave, head south and hop over a crystal ledge, then immediately ascend up the small tunnel to your right before the revenant in the second pit area has a chance to eat you. Once you've done that, it's fairly easy to retrace your steps back to the exit of the cave. With Lusat's legendary sorcery in hand, return to Selen at Waypoint Ruins. Through the About the Request option, Selen will inform you that her real body is trapped in Witchbane Ruins. Agree to Selen's request, then speak with her again and choose the Lusat's Location option. Once you've gone through all of that dialogue, fast travel to the 4th Church of Merica and make your way down into Witchbane Ruins. Unless Selen specifically gave you the task to retrieve her primal glidstone, then her true body form will not recognize you. Also, if you accidentally hit Selen at Witchbane Ruins, you can repair the damage done by performing the Absolution Ritual at the Church of Vows, using a Celestial Dew. Assuming there are no hiccups, retrieve Selen's Primal Glintstone, speak through all of her dialogue, and then reload the game. Jaren should appear nearby, speak through all of his dialogue, then fast travel to Ronnie's Rise and return to Selavis' hidden puppet chamber, beneath the false floor in the ruins to the northeast. Head to the extra secret chamber on the south side and transfer Selen's Primal Glintstone to her new body. Speak through all of Selen's dialogue, then fast travel to the Rea Lucaria Grand Library. Now an important choice needs to be made regarding who to side with so you'll want to wait for all rewards and consequences for each choice to be explained before making your own. Right outside the Grand Library, there are two summoning signs. The gold summoning sign will have you side with Selen. Siding with Selen is the only way to get Sorcerer Azur's and Lusat's armor sets, along with a Glenstone Chris and Shard Spiral Sorcery. You also get Jaren's armor set and the Witch's Glenstone Crown. So then, what's the downside? Well, although Selen lives, her ultimate fate may be worse than death, Jaren will of course die, and you'll miss out on the rewards for siding with him. Admittedly, those rewards are pretty meager. Pick the red summoning sign to side with Jaren. The rewards for doing so are a single ancient dragon smithing stone, along with the witch's glintstone crown. You can still get Jaren's armor set, but that would require attacking him to death, which goes against the most compelling reason to side with him, at least in my opinion. This is because, from what Jaren says after you side with him, it seems like there may be more to his story or questline added in future updates or expansions to the game. An important note is that this is just speculation. Jaren currently has nothing to do besides a single bit of dialogue and farewell after the fight. And I want to be clear, you will not get Lusat's nor Azur's armor sets if you side with Jaren. You also won't get the Glintstone Chris nor the Shard Spiral Sorcery, and Selen will die. Personally, I'm going to side with Selen because I already sided with Jaren on an alternate character. If I already had the rewards from siding with Selen, I would probably side with Jaren instead. Hopefully that info helps you make a well-informed decision on who to side with. All that's left is to pick the corresponding summoning sign and defeat your opponent. If you accidentally pick the wrong summoning sign, you can let your character die and pick the correct summoning sign after the fact. If you sided with Jaren, go back to where the summoning signs were. Speak with Jaren there to get the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. Once you've gone through all of his dialogue, you can mark this questline off as complete, at least for now. Now being the current version of the game, 1.04. If you sided with Selen, you'll find her in place of Renala. Speak through all of her dialogue, then reload the game. Renala should return, and Selen should move to a corner of the room, now in a new, rounder form. You can pick up the Witch's Glintstone Crown nearby, and finally, you can return to the respective locations of both Azur and Lusat to collect their Glintstone armor sets. And that's about it for Sorceress Selen's quest. Now let's complete Bok's quest and just remember, do not give Bok a larval tier. Travel to Roundtable Hold and purchase Radon's Lion Armor from Finger Reader Enya for 12,000 runes. Next, go to the East Capital Ramparts in Lanedale and speak with Bok. Pick the I'm sorry option, then the give the gold sewing needle option. 
Afterwards, three new dialogue options will show up. Wait till you hear the explanation before picking any. Start off with the I have a favor to ask option and agree with Bok's request, allowing him to call you Lord. This will unlock the My Lord gesture. Next, go with the Surely She'd Be Happy For You option to learn about Bok's misgivings. The Have You Ever Thought It So option is the dangerous one. This line of discussion leads to the option of giving Bok a larval tear if you have one in your inventory, and we want to avoid that. It will end his quest in a very tragic way. Instead, go to your inventory and use the Your Beautiful Prattling Pate. Speak with Bok again and pick the new I Heard a Voice dialogue option. Then respond with That's Right to Bok's question. This will lead to the best outcome and ending to Bok's questline. Since we have time, let's go ahead and complete the rest of Ronnie's questline. Although it can be completed at any time, Ronnie's quest will give us access to one of the best spirit summons in the game, along with the ghost glove warts required to upgrade it. This will set us up for success throughout the rest of the game. Returning to Ronnie's Rise, you'll find a new site of grace in Ronnie's chamber. The seal at Rena's Rise to the northeast should also be open now. Go there and climb up the first ladder. Turn around to find a chest containing Ronnie's Snow Witch armor set. Continue up and take the transporter to an entirely new area, Einsel River. Upon arrival, you'll find a miniature Ronnie doll near a coffin. Pick it up and then sit down at the Einsel River main site of grace. Select the Talk to Miniature Ronnie option three times in a row. On the third attempt, she will actually respond and task you with defeating the Baleful Shadows in Einsel River. Before doing anything else, let's get the map fragment for Einsel River. Start by heading south beneath the malformed star enemy. You can pick up some ghost glove warts leveled 6 and 7 along the way. Trek down the burrow and go southwest at the fork, over the mound of bloody bones, and past a flat-headed giant ant. This path will open up into a cavern that we'll need to get to the bottom of. Along the way, there is a chest you can open containing the Wing of Estelle weapon. Afterwards, make your way to the bottom of the ruins and use whatever tools are at your disposal to eliminate the malformed star enemy. Make your way down a little further and you'll find the map for Einsel River near a hermit merchant. If you want, head a little further south to discover the Einsel River downstream site of Grace, then return to Einsel River, Maine. Head southwest through Ul Palace Ruins to reach the Noxtella Eternal City site of Grace. You can speak with Miniature Ronnie again at this location for more dialogue. Before continuing, we'll head up into the Citadel for some legendary items. At the top of the first staircase, find the room to the left of the initial herd of Silver Tears. Inside, you'll get the Ghost Glove Ward Picker's Bell Bearing too. The Night Maiden and Swordstress puppets are locked behind a fog wall that requires a stone sword key to open. It's down the hall and to the left after passing the initial herd of Silver Tears.
After crossing the first large bridge, there is a large room containing a chest with a great glove wart to the right. You'll get trapped inside with a giant metal sphere enemy that will need to be defeated before you are able to leave. In the next building, there is a chest containing a somber smithing stone 7. Finally, crossing over the last bridge will bring you to the room with a legendary talisman. You'll need to face off with two silver tears and a night maiden, but afterwards you can open up the chest to get the Moon of Noxtella, which increases memory slots for spells by two. There's a side door that leads to a lift. The lift will bring you to a lower level where you can grab a golden seed. I recommend traveling back to the previous site of Grace and heading west through the river. It's a bit dangerous, but there are ghost glove warts along the way, leveled 7 and 8. You'll eventually find a lift that will take you down to the Noxtella Waterfall Basin Site of Grace. A short distance to the northeast is a ghost glove wart level 9. You should now have everything needed to level a strong spirit summons to plus 10, However, you may want to hold off on those upgrades until getting the Black Knife Tish Ashes near the end of Ronnie's quest. At the base in sight of Grace, speak with miniature Ronnie until she starts repeating herself, then move on through the tunnel to the south. In the next chamber, you'll face the Baleful Shadow, which resembles Blythe. For melee builds, I recommend the Stamp Upward Cut skill as a sort of cheese strategy. After defeating the Baleful Shadow, Ronnie will bid you farewell and give you the discarded Palace Key. Take the lift down to the south and discover the Lake of Rot shoreside site of Grace. After doing so, travel to the Rea Lucaria Grand Library and use the discarded palace key, opening the chest therein to get the Dark Moon Ring. We'll need this later on. Now we'll need to tackle what is probably the most annoying part in this entire questline, the Lake of Rot. To make it a whole lot more manageable, you'll want the Flame Cleanse Me incantation, which we got at the start of part 3 in this series. I already stepped on the pressure plates along the way, but doing so causes platforms to rise up out of the lake, making the journey across safer. You can fully explore the lake to acquire some unique weapons and gear, but for Ronnie's quest you'll just need to make your way over to the Grand Cloister Site of Grace. From there, platform your way down to the channel of rot below, then head towards its terminus.
Near the end of the path, you'll find a coffin that you can use to travel to a remote location. Here, you'll have to defeat Estelle, natural born of the Void. It's a fairly difficult boss battle, but I am almost positive that people will be sharing various cheese tactics in the comments section. Personally, I used the God Slayer's Greatsword plus 9, and it was fairly effective. Defeating this boss will reward you with the Remembrance of the Natural Born, which can be traded to Finger Reader Enya for a special flail or the Waves of Darkness Ash of War. Moving on, activate the new Site of Grace, then head towards the north side of the boss chamber. If you didn't have the Dark Moon Ring, there would be a seal blocking the path. Once you have the ring, the seal will go away. The lift will take you directly to Moonlight Altar, the plateau in southwest Lyurnia that is unreachable through any other means. First, travel northeast towards the Cathedral of Manus Celis. Glintstone Dragon Adula will appear and attack as you approach the cathedral. You can defeat this boss now if you'd like, but it isn't necessary for completing Ronnie's quest. Doing so will get you the Adula's Moonblade Sorcery though, which is pretty great. Once at the Cathedral Site of Grace, make your way down the tunnel to the south. I really want to avoid spoiling this scene, so I will just say that you'll find Ronnie and speak to her to unlock the Age of the Stars ending to the game. You won't be stuck with that ending, it will just be an option that you can choose. After speaking to Ronnie, you can pick up the Dark Moon Greatsword, which is one of the legendary armaments. Before leaving Moonlight Altar, let's get the other two legendary items. First is the Black Knife Tish Spirit Ashes. You'll need to defeat Black Knife Electo over at the Ringleader's Everjail to the northeast. This boss is very tough and cheese tactics are welcomed in the comments. Personally, I defeated Electo after a great start with the God Slayer's Greatsword, but it was still a pretty close call. Again, this boss drops the legendary Black Knife Tish Ashes when defeated, and it's one of the best summons in the game. Next, we'll get the Ronnie's Dark Moon Legendary Sorcery. To do that, head to the Southwest Tower. We'll need to solve the puzzle to open the seal and claim the legendary sorcery. There are three giant turtles we'll need to hit, and we'll need to do this without fast traveling, dying, or otherwise reloading the game. The first turtle is clinging to the side of the cliff right near the edge of the tower. For the second turtle, you'll need to follow the trail of tortoises to the southern cliff of this area, which is directly south of Lunar Estate Ruins. Drop down a short distance to find this turtle, then drop down another ledge before making your way back up to the top area. Heading west, past the Moonfolk Ruins, you should be able to see the final giant turtle floating up in the air. It's actually being held up there by a spirit spring. You can try shooting it with a crossbow, or make your way down to the spring and then use it to leap up into the air and hit the final turtle. Return to the tower where we started and ascend to claim your reward. For Ronnie's quest, there are still a few loose ends to tie up at this point. Return to Ronnie's rise and exit out the main entrance. You'll find a hostile Blythe. You'll have to defeat him to get Blythe's armor set along with the Royal Greatsword. If you don't already have the Wolf Mask, you can head over to Celevis's rise and scale the broken stone wall on the exterior. It's found up near a high point. As you may know from part 3 in this series, Celevis is dead and we already got his stuff. Head to EG's location south of Caria Manor. Go through all of his dialogue and two things will happen. First, even if you didn't complete Blythe's quest, you would now be able to purchase the Carrion Filigreed Crest Talisman. Second, after telling EG about Blythe's death and reloading the area, EG will be dead and you'll be able to loot his bell bearing along with EG's Mirror Helm. Lastly, if you sit at the Ronnie's Chamber site of Grace, you can share some final dialogue with Miniature Ronnie. That's about it for Ronnie's quest and for part 4 of this series. If you want, you can go ahead and complete Via's quest following the guide I've put together. A link to it is near the bottom of this video's description. I'll also link other guides down there that I think are worth following and that won't interfere with any other quests. Definitely avoid defeating any bosses that hold great runes, especially Rykard.
If you're still having trouble with the quests covered in this video, you can reach out in the comment section where I will do my best to help. I also recommend checking the comment I have pinned as I'll be updating it with information about specific problems people are having and potential solutions. In part 5 of this series, we will complete the initial steps in the Volcano Manor quest, before heading into Langdale Royal Capital, where there are lots of missable items. You can find it over on my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Another great way to support the channel is through the Marshmallow merch store. It features professional Elden Ring inspired artwork of your favorite fluffball, with a new Ronnie inspired design available now. Have a great day, if you're here today, have a great Sunday, and a great week, and as always, thanks for watching.